I clean and I fix Till my legs feel like bricks My best friend is a mop I work till I drop Harold Halibut is an absolutely gorgeous game that features a unique, handcrafted art style. It looks a lot like a point-and-click adventure game, but it plays more like an interactive TV show. Beyond the visuals, the focus of this game is squarely on its character-centric storytelling. But as I got older, I realized that each person aboard the ship was a world of their own. So I became a postman, and it meant I got to visit lots of new worlds every day. Harold Halibut tells an alternative history story, where some people escape the Cold War in a giant spaceship called the Fedora. No, not that Fedora. Nope, not that one either. That's the one. After a 200 year long journey, they finally arrived only to discover that the planet lacked any habitable land and the air was toxic. To make matters worse, the ship was hit by solar winds and crashed into the planet's ocean. Many people survived, but they were stuck there. 50 years later, the game starts and we meet the main character, Harold Halibut. Harold is a timid handyman without any direction in life. Even people that like him play pranks on him. Ah! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Harold. I couldn't resist. <laughs> Ow! Ow! Sai, was the printer even broken? Maybe, maybe. Or interrupt and ignore him during conversations. Plus, there was this woman who... Quiet, Harold. We don't have time for your flights of fancy right now. Despite this, he has a heart of gold and always tries to help out other people that are doing the important work. One such project that he's assisting with is a plan to escape the planet before the solar winds start back up. While he doesn't have the expertise required, he assists his mother figure, Professor Moreau, and an awkward but genius scientist, Cyrus, with this goal. Cyrus is voiced by John Billingsley, who previously gave an excellent performance as Dr. Flox in Star Trek Enterprise. The game's voice acting in general is fantastic. There's a large cast of quirky characters with distinct personalities to set them apart from each other. One example is Schlippy Schlippmeyer, a sleazy winter sports salesman that jumps at the chance to show Harold his new infomercial. You can bet the weather forecast shows slippies across the board. Come in out of the cold and into slippies. Slippies, heat protection so good, it'll be a cold day in hell. The early game is driven by exploration, curiosity, and intrigue. Oh, did you see that? You'll spend time getting to know the different locations and characters. Not everything is as it seems when it comes to All Water Corp, the company that controls basically everything. Their CEO, Brenna Castlechop, comes across as fake and overly concerned with her public image. During their early game, I found myself stopping and zooming in to take in the sights. Slow Bros, the aptly named developer of this game, decided that they'd prefer to physically handcraft the assets rather than learn 3D modeling. It was a painstaking process that led to the game taking 14 years to make. It seems like it would have been easier to learn 3D modeling to me, but I'm glad that they didn't. The process of physically modeling everything, then digitizing it using photogrammetry, is what gives Harold Halibut its striking artistic style. The hand-painted imperfections give everything much more character than standard 3D modeling would have. Every room you move through looks like a diorama and is packed with tiny little details. At a certain point in the story, characters need to start wearing earbuds, and you can actually see them added to the character models without the game ever drawing attention to it. The game is filled with small details like this that could be easily overlooked. 
I won't be surprised if this game wins awards for its art direction later this year. But I would be pleasantly surprised if you hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it, and it's a huge help for the channel. Once you get to the mid-game, the story starts to drag a bit. Narrative-focused games usually have puzzles or choices matter gameplay so that the characters and story don't always have to be firing on all cylinders. Unfortunately, Harold Halibut doesn't have any of that. While there are some basic mini-games, and even a couple arcade machines, they are extremely simple. There are occasionally dialogue options, but they are fairly pointless and don't impact the story in any way. The majority of the gameplay involves running around from place to place. And I've got to mention that Harold is never in a rush. The standard move speed is a tediously slow walk. There is a run button, but it's more of a slow jog than it really should have been the default speed, with an actual run speed included on top of that. The run button is a bit unresponsive at times too. Despite this, I found the characters compelling enough to visit every in-game day. It reminded me of playing Mass Effect and visiting the characters after every mission. You'll find that you're constantly running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There's an optional task where Harold delivers mail to people, but for some reason, he can only carry one piece of mail at a time. So you go to his room, pick up mail, deliver it, then repeat a total of six times. When Harold delivered and read the letters, they were often heartfelt and interesting, but the repetitive delivery process was just pure agony and completely unnecessary. Not everything in the mid game was weak, however. Harold starts to better understand what he wants in life and becomes more confident and assertive. Throughout the narrative, there's a tension between being happy with what you have and aspiring for more. Thankfully, the late game really kicks it into gear. In fact, that's where all the most interesting scenes take place, even if a couple of the story events are predictable. The pacing and variety on display far exceed the rest of the game. I can't get specific without major spoilers, but I will say that it's worth pushing through the mid game. The late game is also where the music becomes more frequent and even takes center stage a few times. The music was good throughout, but it was infrequent until the memorable late game scenes. The characters and story start to get philosophical. It touches on a few philosophical ideas, but only at a surface level, and no one idea is given enough time to breathe or have much impact. Through Harold, the game explores introspection and self-worth, but it doesn't quite nail it. Other than the brevity of these philosophical scenes, I think part of the reason that it's low impact is because the characters give off a bit of a kid's cartoon vibe. It's not that it feels like it's targeted for kids, but it has a straightforward earnestness that makes it feel like a cartoon to me. There are a number of scenes that made me laugh. It has a mostly dry sense of humor that I appreciated. It rarely made me laugh out loud, but it got quite a few chuckles from me. Technical performance was generally quite good. In the hardest to render areas in 4K on high settings, I got an average frame rate in the mid 80s with 1% lows in the mid 60s on an RTX 4090 without any upscaling. It's not an easy game to render, but there are a number of graphics options that you can tweak. It's Steam Deck verified, so it should be playable on lower end systems. I played the Game Pass version, so I wasn't able to try it out on my Steam Deck though. It has a fairly small number of settings available, but that's understandable for a smaller indie title. It includes upscaling via a very out of date FSR 1.0, TAAU, DLSS, and STP. That's a special temporal post processing upscaler, not Stone Temple Pilots. It also has HDR and dynamic resolution, but no official ultra wide support. At the start of the game, I noticed some stuttering. After my first time in an area though, it was smooth and didn't cause much frustration. It was mostly just when running around rather than during cutscenes. 
It's important to note that this game is best played with a controller. While it seems like it's possible to play on a mouse and keyboard, it's not a great experience. The save and load system leaves a lot to be desired. You can't have multiple save profiles, and there's only one autosave slot. It keeps saves at the start of every major chapter section, so it's not quite as bad as it sounds. But if something happens, you could lose up to three hours of progress if you're doing a lot of exploring and optional tasks between those saves like I did. The other bugs I had were visual in nature and pretty minor. Harold sometimes gets smeary when he runs past things, especially his legs. Clipping through objects is somewhat common. Texture pop-in is rare, but it happens sometimes as well. Overall though, I felt like it was solid. Harold Halibut is a 12 to 18 hour adventure filled with memorable characters. It took me 16 and a half hours to do nearly everything. I felt like there was some fluff that could have been cut and some quality of life improvements added to fix the pacing issues. If you enjoy games with strong characters but are light on gameplay and have the patience to power through the weaker middle section of the game, I definitely recommend Harold Halibut. It's on PC Game Pass, so that's a great low-risk way to give it a try. If you want it on Steam, you can pick it up on sale for $30 until April 23rd. Then it'll switch to the normal price of $35. Have you played Harold Halibut? What are your opinions on it? Let me know in the comments below the like button. If you're craving more single-player PC gaming content, here's another video you might enjoy. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, this is Poto Sniper logging out.